let's have a look at a particular technique that's used to analyze your risk. And this particular technique is a qualitative approach. So as you can see from the title, the probability and impact matrix, that's the name of the technique that's given. And that's what I'm gonna be highlighting in this video. So it's an estimating technique for risk that looks at your probability and impact. And it's based on defining a scale for a range of probabilities and also for the impacts. Now the impacts, they reflect impacts on certain project objectives and your project objectives can be things like cost or maybe duration of the project. When it comes to probabilities, the beauty of this method is that you don't have to worry about specifying an exact value for the probability. So your probability, your probabilities can be within a scale. And within that scale, if you assess a situation as falling, its probability of that situation falling within that scale, then you utilize that limit as your defining probability. So we're not worried about a specific value for probability, but it's more of a range. And I'll show you an example in a second, how that looks like. But let's have a look at uh, the probabilities, how they would be defined in, uh, in, in this uh, risk uh, matrix. Uh, before we look at specifically how you would incorporate your probabilities, let's talk about the levels of risk probability. Uh, an advantage, as I said, is that there's no need for specifying an exact level of risk. It's bounds. So if your probability falls within the bounds, that's what we're interested in. You can see uh, the second point on the slide, the range for the uh, probability, you can classify it from very high to very low. So you can divide that scale, let's say, into five steps, uh, starting at the highest end, very high probability, and then high probability, and then maybe medium or moderate, and then low, and then very low. That's five levels in the scale. And this scale can be altered depending on experiences that the organization gains. So for a particular project, maybe you've got a scale whose bound is very tight, and then you you know under, undergo a particular project, you find that there's a lot of risk associated, uh, and you need you know the particular bound to incorporate more uh, probability. So you'd increase the bound for a specific uh, risk level, uh, and that would be defined as your new bound for upcoming projects, and so on. You know, so it's not a fixed. A process, you know, the method itself, uh, it's it's very commonly used. So uh, there are already uh, well-established uh, scales that the organization can adopt. Uh, however, a lot of organizations, they do customize the scales or the ranges within the scale to suit uh, the uh, projects that they uh, undertake. Now, as I said, uh, this is an example, I'll show you an example, and this is an example over here. So the scale, five steps, very high, high, moderate, low, very low. That's the five levels that I have in my probability scale. And the range, as you can see, if the chance of the event occurring is between 76 to 99%, that would be, cons that would be labeled as very high. Uh, if the chances between 46 and 75, it's high and so on. These values, as I said, they do change depending on the organization. There are fixed values that you can find out there. So fixed uh, scales, if you like, scales with fixed bounds, um, and you can adopt these. Uh, but as I said, organizations, they would usually you know, play with these bounds to reflect the characteristics of the projects that they undertake. In terms of the number of steps, in this case, in my scale, I've got five steps. That's the most common uh, number of steps. However, you know, you can increase or decrease that again to suit the type of projects that the organization is undertaking. So this is when it comes to probability. Now, remember, 
the method itself involves impact and probability. We had a look at the probability. We'll have a look at impact now. So in terms of impacts, it's very project specific. So it depends on the uh, project objectives that you define. If your concern is just with cost, then the impact would reflect that particular project objective, i.e. the cost. Again, an example is presented over here. I've got an, an organization with two uh, main project objectives. Number one is cost and number two is time. Now, let's have a look at cost for a second, right? So monetary cost. If the impact of the risk produces a loss, let's say, of $550,000, then on that scale, I'd associate that as very significant impact. If it's between $200,000, to $201,000, so $201,000 and $550,000, then I have a significant impact and so on. So you continue on, you know, just like the scale that we have for probabilities, but notice now we've got, we've defined, you know, what the cost is. If I'm looking at a different objective function, so if I'm looking at um, time, so let's say a project objective, it, you define the scales based on that particular project objective. So in this case, I'm concerned with days of delay. And I've got, if it's more than 50 days, then I'd attribute that as very significant impact on my project. Whereas if it falls, let's say 16 days, and that's between 11 and 20, and have, I'd have a minor impact. So these you know, bounds, whether it's for time, whether it's for cost, or whether it's for any other project objective that the organization has, they can change to reflect the kind of projects that the organization undertakes to reflect uh, whether the organization is risk loving or risk averse or even risk neutral. Uh, but the, the main aim over here is, as you can see, it's called qualitative because I'm not specifically calculating one value but I'm trying to, you know, put in all that information related to values and, and convert that into some sort of uh, a written description, if you like, and that's what the scales are. Okay, so a question that is asked by a lot of people, what if I'm not certain about the probabilities or my impact? What if I don't know what constitutes if that one single event or that risk is going to constitute, you know, a significant impact, or if it's the probability of occurrence is going to be high, well, the you, you've got uh, several options. However, I want to stress two things, two points. Uh, look at the average. So, for in terms of probabilities, just consider the average. The average probability based on, you know, uh, past experiences. If the organization has been established recently, then look at, you know, other organizations in the field. Uh, interview people, if you like, uh, to get an idea of the types, uh, the, the, the risks, but also the probability of occurrence and the impacts that these uh, risks can have, and then maybe take an average. Uh, so let's say you interviewed three uh, different people working for three organizations, see what they say about uh, the probability of risk occurring, see what they say about impact, and maybe take the average and adopt that as a, a as a start. And then as the your organization progresses, you'll get a better understanding of how, you know, these certain risks occur, uh, the probability of these risks occurring, and the impact that they have on your project objectives. And maybe you can modify uh, the scale that you adopt. Uh, any risk, remember that, as I said, the scales are not fixed and the bounds that you define are not risks, so uh, are not fixed. So any risk can be uh, flagged for extra analysis. If you need to carry out that extra analysis, you know, do so. Um, and an uncertainty would be an indication that further analysis would be uh, required. Okay, so we've talked about you know, the scales adopted, we've talked about what to do in case of uncertainty. Let's have a look at an example of how the risk matrix looks like. This is where um, we combine the scale from our probability with the impact scale. As you can see, there's no values over here, so it's just descriptions. Um, 
So this is the uh, description of the probability scale that we had from very high, high, moderate, low, very low. And then we have the impacts. And in this case, we're looking at threats, not opportunities, but threats, negative uh, impacts, if you like. Now, what I want to stress is that if you look at this matrix, uh, first off, first of all, how do you use this matrix? Well, let's say that an impact was classified as uh, minor, so a minor impact on, on your cost objective, let's say. And then the probability of occurrence is moderate. So my minor, moderate, that's where they intersect, and hence the, over, the overall risk is classified as low. What if the impact was significant? So a significant impact, the probability was low, where they intersect, they intersect over here, this um, grid. So at that, at this particular level, it's M, so medium risk. And you can notice that in this particular matrix, we've got low risk, medium M risk, and then high H, a high risk. Uh, the point that I want you to note is that when you look at impact, notice that it has a very, uh, plays a very significant role in the definition of the risk. So let's say that you had this one particular event that was classified as a very significant, that would have a very significant impact on your uh, cost objective. And let's just assume that the probability of occurrence was very low. So very low, very significant. So it's medium risk. So it'd still be classified as a medium risk, even though the probability of occurrence is very low. However, let's uh, just say that an impact, another event has an impact of very minor, and the probability of occurrence of that uh, of that risk was considered to be within the very high boundaries. So the intersection of these two, that's L, low. So a low risk. And it's low even though the probability is very high, given that the impact of that risk is very minor, the overall risk classification that you would adopt for this uh, particular event would be low. So that's uh, what you have to bear in mind, the fact that your impacts will have a significant contribution on the way you define your risk levels.